Ten. Eight. Six. Four. Three. Two. One. Welcome to Memorial Day Sunday here at Sharon United Methodist Church. Before we get started, we have a few announcements that need to be made. The Rose of Sharon will be closed on Tuesday. And I wanted to take this opportunity to let you know that they are in need of volunteers. There are things that can be done from receiving items to hanging items up to sorting the items and checking people out with an easy system. Please consider today volunteering at the Rose of Sharon. We also want to take a minute to congratulate our church on receiving the certificate of occupancy for the building next door. We cannot wait to see what wonderful things are in store for our community there. Vacation Bible School begins very soon on July 7th through the 10th. Sunday School begins next Sunday. Along with that, we are having our Safe Sanctuaries training today at 10.05. We encourage and is required for all people who work with children, teens, and vulnerable adults to attend. If you cannot attend, please contact the office for other instructions. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship.
lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. stuff. Welcome to worship here at Sharon on a beautiful, bright, exciting Memorial Day weekend where we're also celebrating Trinity Sunday with our brothers and sisters around the world. We're celebrating our graduates today. We're celebrating so much. Aren't we a blessed people? It's good yeah. that we have so much to celebrate. <laughs> if life is hard, we'll just think of stuff to celebrate. How's that? We talked about that a couple weeks ago. We ought to be the world's best celebrators. We ought to throw the best celebrations. We, we really are as the people of God, as the children of God. Welcome you if you're visiting today. Uh, whatever brought you into Sharon today, I pray that uh, that Holy Spirit would be felt, but also experienced as you move forward into a new week, really into a new month happening it really is it's it's not a it's not a figment of our imagination a whole other month has has gone by i would highlight for you that the vacation bible school launches a week from tomorrow and we have registration materials and table out there and we have registration materials on the table out there it would be just preferable if you would get the kids registered before Monday night when everybody else shows up and they're trying to get registered. So let's get a jump on that. Deal? All right, and tell your friends, bring, grab some registration materials for your neighbor's kids. We want them all to come. We're, if we're gonna throw a party, we want everybody to come to the party. It is a Charlie Brown theme, and so Charlie Brown is iffy on success with throwing parties. But we, we know that with God, all things are possible. Also, next Sunday after the, the morning worship, we will have Sunday school classes opening back up in the new education building with, with all that goes with that. So my, my promise is that we're gonna end these 845 services in time for people to get to Sunday school. So if I happen in the future to just stop what I'm doing and say it's over because Sunday school is starting, I, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. We uh, start earlier. Want to lift up prayer requests that have come in this week? You can be looking at that in your own bulletins as I read these. But these are prayer requests that have come in this week. Join us in praying for Rudy Beck, the family of Kendall Hewitt, Eugene Bullard, Debbie Blake, Margie Odom and our persecuted Christian church family in the world that we're, we're praying for this week are the people of Cuba. It is not illegal to be a Christian in Cuba, but it's hard to be a, an evangelical Christian in Cuba. At this time, I'm gonna invite our lay leader, Gail Beck, to join me, and we're gonna spend a little time extending some love and appreciation to our graduates. We have uh, this beautiful group that has come today and we celebrate. We spent a little bit of time earlier just me expressing honestly how I'm sorry I, I, I never got to watch you grow up at Sharon Church. And so what I do know is you're commencing, you're commencing into the rest of your life. And so I know that this church family has invested 
heavily in you in so many different ways, and your parents and grandparents and neighbors have invested in you, and we want to just extend a, a little something as you graduate and move on into uh, the rest of your life. I would give you an opportunity when we call you up to say something into this microphone that Susie would give you. If you walk right by, I'm going to read what we have printed in the newsletter about you. <coughs> what I can say about all of these uh, young people is that when I was still having my mom pack my lunch at their age, they've already mostly graduated from college and stuff. And so even though they're very young, these are exceptional young people. Every single one of them is off the charts exceptional. And I, I hope that I can uh, glance lives with you in the future, not just today. I, I want to see you again. I want to I wanna partner with you. I want to I, I wanna be part of your lives. But I, I say that selfishly. I want what God wants for you. And this church family wants what God wants for you as well. So we have some high school graduates Melanie's trying to figure out how to get this on camera for those of you who are out there that also have been uh, celebrating and working with and investing in these young folks. But as I call your name, if, if you look at me like you're going to walk right on by, I'm going to have you walk over to Miss Gale and I'm going to read what it says here about you. And I trust that what, what it says here is the God's honest truth. I suspect that we've had to edit some of it down because there's so much good news about you. But first, uh, our West Brunswick High School graduates. Alexis Jordan St. George. <laughs> she is graduating with honors from West Brunswick High School. She plans to attend BCC in the fall to receive an associate in arts. She's interested in both cosmetology and nursing. Alexis is the youngest graduating student in her class and has already taken the equivalent of a full semester of college credit courses as well as earned her CNA while attending high school. And so we, we celebrate you, Alexis, and applaud you once again for your good work. Now that we're allowed to touch people, I at least want to shake your hand, all right? That's exciting. Next we have Devin Trey Martin. <laughs> Devin is graduating with honors from West Brunswick High School. He plans to attend Lineman School this summer through Cape Fear Community College. Devin participated in the College and Career Promise Program, become a becoming one of a select few students to ever complete an associate degree during their four-year high school career. Devin graduated from Brunswick Community College magna cum laude with an associate in arts on May 8th prior to his high school graduation. Sweet. <laughs> I feel like I should call him sir. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Bollinger. She's graduating from West Brunswick High School. She also graduated from Brunswick Community College with an associate in arts. She is planning on studying vet tech at Cape Fear Community College and to continue working at Brunswick Animal Hospital. Yeah. We're recognizing Christina Higgins today. She's not with us. But I'm reading this. Uh, she is graduating from West Brunswick High School. And she plans on attending BCC while continue, continuing to work in the family business. And Meredith Stone. <laughs> Meredith is graduating from West Brunswick High School and also graduating with Associate in Arts at Brunswick Community College and continuing her education at BCC in preparation for nursing school. We congratulate you, Meredith.
And then there's Zachary Flacavento, who's graduating from <laughs> graduating from Campbell University. Um, I had your paragraph here, and guess what? I put it somewhere else, but I know. I know that you're going to want to tell us what yeah. uh, you've got. Yes, all right, I'll you switched it up with Gail. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you guys so much for this gift. Yes, uh, like Pastor Jim said, I'm graduating uh, from Campbell University, um, Master's of Physician Assistant Program uh, in July. So, I have a little spot right here. Could you check that out? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're, so proud. We're so proud of you all. Yeah, thank yes. you guys for it's exciting. all and it, for the gifts and recognition. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine how you've grown up all yeah, in this church family. And I know that the, that the people who are adoringly looking at you from there are just remembering when you were little, maybe when you were baptized, maybe when you were confirmed, and good things like that. It's part of the journey. Now, we also have a couple of scholarships to award today. Ms. Gale, if you would please give me that. There is an annual Sylvia Lidlam scholarship process that people are able to participate in and apply for. And this year, we have awarded two of these scholarships. First, in the amount of $1,000, we are awarding this certificate to Alexis St. George. And also, we are recognizing with a second year $750 Sylvia Ludlam Scholarship Award to Taryn Wilson, and her mom is going to come up and receive this. <laughs> if you're willing to, would you just reach out to these young people like this? And I'm going to pray. Lord, I pray that your blessing would be upon these young women and men, that they would know that you are for them, that they would understand as they walk forward that you put them in this world, not only to bless them, but to bless the world through them. I thank you for their parents and their coaches and their teachers and the people that drove their buses and the people who have been neighbors to them and Sunday school teachers and former pastors and all of the people from the church family and youth group leaders and everybody that's invested in them. God, I pray that their hearts would be filled with your spirit and that they would move forward in their lives, enjoying this season of celebration, but moving past that into adulthood. We know you have good plans for them and that you will be faithful to complete them. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. All right, I'm gonna invite our singers to stay up. But we're going to have the rest of you sit back down. Congratulations. You made a clip? I'm not surprised.
the spirits, Lord, we come. Oh, and gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior.
we're so thankful for, God, that takes us in his arms at the simple call of your name, Father. You are there to save, protect. You welcome us, Father. Save us. Have a seat, everybody. I invite the children to come up. I know we have some. I think some are in the nursery. They're actually in the nursery. I, I'm not sure about it 100%, but I think there might. It, it, it happened. It took a lot of effort and work, and I, I want to thank the people that have put a lot of time and effort and prayer and uh, elbow grease into getting the nursery up and running. It is, uh, it's a joy to welcome the, the children. But I do want to spend a couple minutes with these, these kids. Yeah. Those are flags. They are flags. You've got it right. You know what's going on. These are very special flags here. This is the American flag. I know you've seen that. We have one here. Here comes some more kids. All right. <laughs> Come over this way, guys. These other flags are flags from the other, what's called, branches of the military, the armed services. And someday, we hope that we won't need these people anymore, but every one of these flags stands for a group of people whose job it is to help us to stay free. Today is the day before Memorial Day. Did you know it was Memorial Day tomorrow? Yeah. On Memorial Day, we as Americans remember the people who served with the Army and the Navy and the Air Force and the Marines who went to fight for our freedom. Someday you can ask your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas what it means that they fought for our freedom. But some of them, when they were fighting, they died. And that's very serious and that's very sad. But we remember them this weekend. We remember that they were brave. We remember that they made sacrifices and that we can be here today because of what they did for us, and we thank you for their families. Flag That's right. Like this. All of that, all of that, the big flags do wave. But I'm going to just pray with you right now, and we'll send you back. Can you pray with me? We thank you, God, for this freedom that we have in America to worship Jesus, to be together in this sanctuary. We remember the women and men who gave their lives so we could be free. Bless their families and this church family in Jesus' name. you. Y'all look very beautiful. All right. I'm up here asking if anybody would, would loan me their bulletin. Oh, there it is. Thank you for jumping right at it. I appreciate that. Pray with me. Gracious God, as your children in this place, we do know that in the name of Jesus, we are set free, we are liberated. There is no power that has a hold of us when we step into the freedom offered by Jesus Christ. 
We thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit, for empowering us, for allowing us to be part of your kingdom work that you're doing in this world. Holy God, we, we are here because of sacrifice. And we do remember those who have given their lives in defense of our freedom this weekend as a nation. But it seems appropriate to say in this morning, we, we remember Jesus Christ, who was perfect, who never hurt anybody, who came to set people free, who, who came to give people their dignity back, who came to deliver people from sickness, who came to deliver people from addictions, he, who came to set people free from bad relationships, who came to give people abundant life where they did not want for anything. And we remember that in order to seal that freedom, he allowed himself to go to the cross and to die a real death. He, he wasn't an American that day. He, he wasn't Chinese. He wasn't Iranian. He wasn't Nicaraguan or Nigerian. Was the Son of God, perfect in every way, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And in so doing, he canceled the curse that's upon all of us when we enter into this broken world. And through the name of Jesus, in the power of the Spirit, the gracious and loving Father, we have an opportunity to say goodbye to sickness, to say goodbye to bankruptcy, to say goodbye to anxiety and anger. We have an opportunity to embrace our neighbors, even if we don't always agree with them. We have an opportunity to forgive those who have hurt us. We have an opportunity to step out in faith when we don't believe we've got it in us. We have the opportunity to really be the church, to be the hands and the feet and the mouths and the ears of Jesus Christ in a world that is suffering needlessly because they do not know our Jesus. God, as a church family, I pray today on this Memorial Day weekend that we would use our freedom to share good news, to offer forgiveness, to truly repent ourselves and follow after you wherever you are leading us. May our prayers look a lot more like listening before we get on to talking about our list of things we want you to do for us, God. But as you heal the sick, As you shower down blessings upon our families, as you forgive us, as you restore justice, as you restore peace, as you recognize us when nobody else will even see that we're here, we praise your name. We thank you, God being our God, for loving us, for opening your arms wide open. And Jesus, we are so grateful that you didn't leave us as orphans, that your Holy Spirit has been poured out over all flesh. Lord, bring on the visions, bring on the dreams, that this church might be an arm of your kingdom that would be hard to miss. heal us. Free us for joyful obedience. And now, in that obedience, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able as we say together what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for the generosity of this congregation, and we now dedicate this offering to the furthering of your kingdom until your return. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Good morning. Today's gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descends from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. These are the words of God for the people of God. Nicodemus was a religious man, the man that we just heard in that conversation with Jesus. Uh, he had an enormous respect for God. 
He really did. He, he, he wanted to know everything there was that would make him right with God. He had a respect for the law of Moses. And everything about the law, he tried to keep it himself. Unfortunately for Nicodemus, he had a significant spiritual problem. He was absolutely oblivious to the kingdom mission of Jesus. He was clueless. He had no idea what Jesus' mission was, even though he'd spent his whole life getting ready for Jesus. When Jesus was standing right in front of him, he didn't know. He didn't know. And he was absolutely devoid of the Holy Spirit. I think that was exactly why he missed it. <laughs> I think that Nicodemus gives us a little bit of a glimpse at uh, an ever-widening percentage of people that live in our society who really do have a respect for God, who have an interest in spiritual things, but who do not know Jesus, don't understand the kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim, and they do not have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit through the blood of Christ. And they stumble in the darkness. When there is light available, there is light available. Today is Trinity Sunday, and I, I want to share with you about a three in one God who forgives us, makes us holy, and then sends us out into mission and ministry. It's not because it's Trinity Sunday, it's just because this is the good news. This is the gospel. And so I'm going to read from the Old Testament. This relatively familiar account of the prophet Isaiah before he really went into his prophetic ministry. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 6, the first eight verses. These are the words of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. These, that's a type of angel, by the way. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. It's the reading of God's word for us this morning. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be found pleasing and acceptable to you. You are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <laughs> so this is a vision of God in the temple. It's, it's more than just a dream. This is a God-sent vision. This was a calling experience. Have you, if, if you've ever known anybody who's been called by God to do something, you know that it's very real to them. They can't help themselves. 
It's a full body experience. It's truly a calling. And this is Isaiah's calling experience. <laughs> what does it say here? God, he's, he's in the temple of God, which is about the most awesome place on earth, right? It was designed to make people just fall flat on their face at the thought of it. As a matter of fact, most people weren't even able to get near the temple. And here is God sitting on a high and lofty throne. And there's angels flying around. And they're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the word host just means a whole bunch of angels. Thousands of them. This God is the God of angels. And this is a God who is holy. And then it says the, the, the doors shook and the temple filled with smoke. Wow. This is an image of that Father God, that, that awesome God that we read about mostly in the Old Testament. Uh, this is the God who told Moses while that burning bush was Speaking with him, he said, take off your shoes, because this is holy ground. This is that God. This is the Father God. This is the awesome God. This is the God who says, you can't even look at me, and I am not going to tell you my name, because you couldn't handle it if I gave you my name. In fact, it, when you go, Moses, then talk to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, what's your God's name? Just say, I am. That's how awesome God is. I just am. Reminds me of that, that scene in The Wizard of Oz where the, the, they're in there and the, and, and the great and wonderful Oz is there and there's this massive, this massive amount of smoke and mirrors and all this and, and the cowardly lion just goes crazy. He can't handle being in there and he runs down the hallway and he smashes right through a window. <laughs> Remember that? Well, this is about... 4,000 times more awesome than that. And, and there's no games being played here. This is not somebody behind the curtain pulling levers. This is the presence of Almighty God. <laughs> and so Isaiah says, I, as I'm just standing there, my, my first assumption was, this is the moment where I'm going to die. If we really understood how awesome God was, any of us would really understand that we couldn't stand before a holy God and survive. We're too dirty. And Isaiah knew that. He says, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. I'm lost. I'm toast. I am a man with a filthy mouth. And I hang around with a bunch of other people who also have filthy mouths. I can't be here. Am I even still alive? Let me die. I'm not worthy. The truth of the matter is, we should all approach God that way at some point in our lives. We, we want God to do stuff for us. If we have any idea who are you are asking, we wouldn't ask. It's only by God's grace that, that this has happened, and it's only by God's grace that we have access to that. But after he says, I, I'm not worthy, it, but yet my eyes have seen the king. My eyes have seen the king. Somehow I got to see it. And I can't unsee what I just saw. I can't unsee it. And it says, then an angel went over to the, the altar of incense, which would have been burning with the sacrifices being brought in by the people. And the priest would have been making that smoke rise up to God as a pleasing aroma to God on behalf of the people. And it says that the, the angel took a tong and he brought out a, a burning coal over to Isaiah, and he put it on his mouth, right on his lips. 
and he touched him. And then the angel said, you are now clean. Your sins have been forgiven. They're blotted out. As if to say, I'm about to give you an assignment, and I want to take away all your excuses. And I'm declaring you pure and holy and righteous, not because of anything you've done, but because I can do that. I can do it, and I want to. I choose you today to be pure and holy. It's like our communion liturgy that after we recognize Jesus' death on the cross and, and we confess our own sin, the other part comes back where it says, even though we're sinners, Christ died for us anyway. And that frees us, frees us for joyful obedience. That's what was happening to Isaiah. And then finally the Lord asks, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? I think that's an interesting sentence on Trinity Sunday, where the Lord would say, who will go for us? I think the, I think the full presence of God, the full Godhead was active in that moment. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were all there. Who will go for us? And Isaiah, now understanding that God had taken away his excuses, raises his hand and says, here I am. You've got me. Where do you want me to go? Send me. I'm yours. Isn't this the gospel? In the Old Testament, isn't this the gospel? where a holy and righteous God looks at an imperfect person and sees them the way God created them to be, blameless and holy and righteous, looking past all the dirtiness, looking past all the failures, looking past all the doubt, and just declaring, you are righteous, you are holy, because I have made you that. Now I have something I want you to do. You don't have to do it, but I, I've created this opportunity just for you. I've chosen you, not anybody else. And if you know much about Isaiah and Isaiah's times, living before that, that great Babylonian insurrection and all that grief and horror and exile that was about to come, you know that Isaiah had a big job. He had to go and confront the sins of an entire nation. And God knew that in order for him to do that, he had to be completely free. And God did that for him. Listen, we're, as we wrap up, we just think about it. This is the gospel. We shrink before a righteous and holy God. The Father knows us. He knows everything we've ever done. He knows everything we've ever thought. He knows every place we've ever been, and still, he loves us. Then God meets us where we are. He meets us right where we are. There's no surprises for God. And then he just says, I love you. I forgive you. Please accept my invitation into my kingdom. I've got a place just for you. And your family and your children and your children's children and your children's children to a thousand generations. When your girls were singing that, I thought I was going to explode. How many generations have there been since that conversation between Isaiah and God and us sitting here today? And the babies in the nursery are the next generation. 
and one day those babies will be here and we'll be celebrating their graduation and some of us will be celebrating your funerals. And so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes. But God's an infinite God. God's plans are eternal. And we are God's children. He equips us and he empowers us and he sends us out. He rarely sends us out alone. That's the beauty of a church family. He sends us together. <laughs> Somebody might say, yeah, Janet Majelli is putting on VBS this year. <laughs> like Janet would be the first one to see. No! There's a whole bunch of people coming together that will be presenting Vacation Bible School. And there's room for more. We are people of unclean lips and we hang out with people who have unclean lips. But God, he knows that. And we can do better, for sure. And God sees our potential. He sees our potential, Travis. He knows what we can be. He knows how we were designed. And I'm so glad. Because sometimes our filthiness makes it so we cannot see our potential. We can't embrace it. We don't understand who we really are. But God, God knows who we really are. And he invites us to come. And I will pray and we'll sing and we'll move forward. Lord, we are your people and we are humbled by the reality of your love for us. I agree with the Apostle Paul that even the best we have to offer is like filthy rags next to you. But yet, you can do a lot. You can do a lot with filthy rags. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for the testimonies of people who've overcome their shortcomings, who've accepted new life. Nicodemus was wondering what it meant to be born again and Jesus was sharing, you have to be born of water and the Spirit. So God, may we be born of your Spirit. Pour your Spirit on this congregation and heal us. And then send us. Heal us and then send us. Some of us don't even know we need to be healed, but you know. You know us in every place, in every part of our lives. And you understand it. So Lord, heal us. We beg you. Free us for joyful obedience. In your name, amen. Please stand and join us.
Good morning. I'm going to invite our graduates, if you would, to kind of present yourself. If you want to be outside, that's okay. I think it's more important for people to be able to look you in the eye and congratulate you than, than to do anything about me. I'll kind of hang out over here, but we're so proud of you. God's got so much goodness in store for you and already has been using you. It's just it's going to get better. The impact you're going to make on this world is amazing. God already knows it. You're going to live into it. Well, for the rest of us, go in peace and confidence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>